Why are you crying, dear? I'm so excited to think about having a little dog. Well, I don't know how to start this video off any other way but to say we're driving 600 miles to go pick up our new puppy. We're getting a puppy! <laughs> it's been long overdue. We've talked about getting a dog now that we upgraded from living in a small 22 foot van to a larger 26 foot travel trailer. But we're the kind of people that kind of over plan sometimes and overthink about things and we never just go and do it. We are not impulsive. No. Unfortunately not. Sometimes that's We're good. spontaneous. Sometimes it's But bad. we're not impulsive. So part of the reason why we actually waited so long is because we didn't actually know what kind of dog to get and we can't just go to a shelter and pick up one because we don't know how Chris is going to react to it. So that led us to the list of hypoallergenic dogs. Growing up I had a miniature schnauzer and I loved that little miniature schnauzer. Erin wasn't on the same page as that, so it was really like, well, I like this one, what about that one? And we had a hard time uh, just like really agreeing on which ones we really wanted. It's hard to find one that fits your exact lifestyle. I mean, we don't have a whole ton of space. We're very active. We need one that likes to run and hike and walk and is very energetic, but at the same time, we don't want one that's so crazy that it's hard to handle. We don't want it too big, we don't want it too little. So we ended up deciding to get a Basenji. And it's kind of not a super popular dog, but it is hypoallergenic. It has very cat-like features where it licks itself clean. It's v stubborn. Very short hair, doesn't shed, doesn't have a lot of dander and it's uh, supposedly a really clean dog. And they have a lot of energy and stamina so they can keep up with our fitness level. We can take it out a lot. It's a good size for in here, um, like a 20 pound maximum. 24 I think is the maximum, but yeah, pretty, pretty close to that 20, 24 pounds. And so that leads us on this impulsive two day trip to Tucson, Arizona, leaving from uh, the California, Alabama Hills area. And we're heading down to pick up our new puppy this weekend. And we're off to Arizona. I've never been so excited for a road trip, for a hotshot road trip. Today's trip is gonna be about 215 miles to sunny Palm Springs, California, where we're gonna stay one night at the Thousand Trails there. And then we're gonna get up early for the long day, which is what, 400 miles? Yep. All the way to Tucson. Woohoo! Tucson or bust! about three miles from the RV park, home sweet home. We've been to this place many, many times, this thousand trails here in Palm Desert. And uh, it's nice to see some sunshine, some palm trees. We're excited to get in at a decent time at four o'clock here where we can still cook dinner, relax a little bit, and get ready for the big drive tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. Pickleball's going on. It's been so long since we've been in an RV park. I know. All right, thanks. Well, this should be fun. Yes. The busy, tight back-in spot. Well, you've or you've already backed in, so I would just uh, maybe go straight, and then we'll loop back down to the right. Okay.
Good morning and happy Friday, the day before we pick up our little dog. And we slept last night like we have a puppy coming. We were like two little kids on Christmas Eve, waking up in the middle of the night and just excited. It was tough. My mind was racing on uh, the eight hours of Amazon shopping I did yesterday. I think I picked up almost everything we could. I got a lot of good deals and I feel like we saved a lot of money over going to the pet store. You did get a lot of open boxes, didn't you? And a lot of time, like just going into the pet store. Could you imagine being overwhelmed in a pet store? I, yeah, I could. You'd just be like grabbing this and that and like... Yeah, I would totally be over-purchasing. My emotions would come through. It'd be, go it'd be just like going to the grocery store hungry. Yeah, and of course we're still gonna probably have to go and get some things. Like there's just gonna be a lot of stuff that we didn't even think about. But this was a good stay, an overnight stay. We didn't film a lot about the parking last night, but uh, this park normally has pull-throughs. All the pull-throughs were full, so we had to do some backing in. And that honestly took us two different sites to get to. It's so tight here with all these palm trees. And <laughs> it's just a, it's a mess. So um, Chris did a good job backing up and we got in a spot. Yeah, this is the first time we've uh, used our auto leveling pads while still hooked up to the truck. Um, normally we just don't do that. Just haven't ran across that situation very much. So that worked pretty well to like level the RV just slightly while still hooked up to the RV so that we can safely put out our slide and uh, have a nice night's sleep. But we have a long travel day today, six plus hours on the map, which probably means it'll take about eight hours and it's 8 a.m. right now. So we need to get going and heading towards Tucson. Let's hit the road. Arizona. That is our final destination state. We just have to drive across it now. We've had a lot of people asking what our miles per gallon while towing is. And this has been our cleanest measurement where we have it uh, trip gauged without doing any trips without towing, it's just the truck. So this is a purely towing measurement. And we're coming in at 12.7 miles per gallon. And this trip is from California to Arizona. So there's not a ton of crazy mountain inclines and things like that that would lower it um so it's been pretty steady at that 12.5 to 13 max we've never really seen it get any higher than that we just arrived to the rv resort and it is swanky here in it's uh, Voyagers in Tucson. It does cost $20 per night. We are paying it because we need the location convenience and we're kind of excited to go to a nice RV resort. And tonight is our last night it has free non-parents. So Aaron and I can go out and do whatever we want without having to be concerned about our little guy at home. So we just got into the RV park and we're starting to settle in. And I spot over here in the corner, my clothes closet was halfway open. So these little bungee straps do actually work and that saved this whole thing from tumbling out, spilling out, and I got a bunch of stuff in there besides clothes. So these little bungees we just keep on our cabinets for our clothes. Save the day. Having that one little incident makes all the hassle worth it. Absolutely, yeah, I Justified. like it. Justified. We've had no problems with anything breaking or spilling or opening up and, and now we know that they actually, they work. They do. And welcome home. This RV park is really nice and we're gonna be here for four nights. So it's fun to do a setup 
when you're not just staying for a night or two. You get to actually like soak it in. So we're gonna probably have dinner and then go to bed and we have a big day tomorrow. Yes, a very long travel day today. We are, are glad to be finally settled in after dinner. <clears throat> and we actually got a little bit of time to do some name practice uh, while we were driving today. And we came up with a little bit of, of a list that uh, we'd like to share with you. A short list of considerations. Of course, you can't really name anybody until you've looked them in the eyes and you feel their personality. That's true. So we looked at many like uh, top 100 dog lists and uh, just some general reading where trainers say that a one syllable or two syllable name is better than a longer name as well as um, having the dog's name end in a vowel. Which you also don't want it to rhyme with <laughs> common things like no, stop, walk, sit. things like that. Like you don't want to call your dog Kit because it rhymes with sit or you don't want to call your dog Bo because it rhymes with no and it's hard for it to differentiate that so you want its name to like stand out makes and, sense and be strong so the list that we came up with and feel free to pipe in uh the names that you guys would like to see this little baby boy to be first name and this is the very first one that we both really really liked and it's a very very top contender benji benji the basenji <laughs> it just kind of I don't know if that's the most common name for a Basenji dog, uh, but it just kind of came off that way. Uh, next up is Cooper. Cooper, nice and solid. What I like about Cooper is it reminds me of Copper. Which Copper was one of the names that we thought about. We should be getting a red colored Basenji, which kind of is copperish. Next up, Louis. Louis is my grandfather's name. He passed away and I think about him every day. I could see this being a very, very top contender because our business is named Irene after your grandma, who is Louis's uh, wife. And so Irene and Louis, um, I could see that happening. It just makes my heart flutter. But we don't know yet. Next up would be Remy. Remy. Remy is masculine and flirty at the same time. And quick and it fits a small little dog and it's quick and easy to say Remy. It's fun. Remy. It's fun. So you got to think about a puppy name and also like a 15 year old name. You know, like you want this name to really last the duration of your pup. Like Buttercup. <laughs> okay. And the very last name is Carter. Carter. Carter is another one. It's a little bit fun. It's a little bit serious. It's strong, but it's a good contender. Yeah. So that's going to be it. We're going to sleep on these names tonight. We're going to see our little guy in the morning, and we'll see you too. Good morning and happy Saturday to you, Christine. Happy and everybody Saturday. else. Happy Saturday to you. Today is the day we're gonna go pick up our little dog. We're at PetSmart right now, waiting for it to open. It's got like 10 minutes till we get there. Um, and we need to just pick up that quick little collar and leash before we pick up the dog because none of our supplies from Amazon are showing up until today and tomorrow. And a bag of dog food. Yes, that's probably a good thing to get. <laughs> Don't forget about food for we the do new wanna, baby. We do wanna feed it on our first day. Yes. Twenty-five minutes away. Are you nervous, babe? I'm not nervous at all. You're you're kind of quiet. I'm worried. I think I'm just like so excited. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Are you nervous? Uh, you know, there's some slight nerves because you just don't know. There's so many, <laughs> so many variables. It's gonna it's gonna change our life for the next decade and a half. So yeah. There's a lot to it. Yeah, this is not a small commitment. I think that's why we've been waiting so long because we know it's a serious commitment. Yeah, it pretty much changes your, your life, you know, what you can do and what you can't do. And especially the first six to 12 months, I would imagine, when it's a puppy. I remember even saying like a year ago, like, yeah, we're definitely not gonna get a puppy because they're just too much work. And 
course, here we are, like, geeked out about getting a puppy. Yeah. Well, ideally, you know, you could get that perfect rescue dog, but then it's like, how do you know if you're allergic to it? How do you spend enough time? Like, you go into the pound, and you're going to be allergic to, like, all the dogs, so you're not going to be able to tell. I wonder if they do, like, test runs. Well, I'm pretty sure you can get uh, prick tests, like, blood tests done to find out which breeds you're allergic to. Oh. But, but like you said, a lot of rescue dogs are mixes. mixes yeah. You don't really know what they are. Yeah, that's true. So that makes it harder. Um, some you would be able to spend a night with, like, depending on where you're getting it from, but there's also restrictions for our beers on who's going to give our beers dogs, who's not, because we don't have a fenced in yard. So there's all sorts of challenges that are unique to everybody's situation. Yeah, that's true. This is it. We're two minutes away. Are you ready? Yeah, my heart is beating really fast and my palms are starting to get sweaty. <laughs> Alright, we'll start taking the puppy advice now. So cute, buddy. He's doing okay in the car so far. We don't have our kennel for him yet. You look like a little deer. Mm. Missing his little family already, his brothers and sisters. Buddy. Look at this cute picture I got of you guys. That's a good one. Get ready because we're going to be blasting all of our friends and family when we get home. This is what it's like when you have a child. You start sending pictures to everybody. I already have a puppy album with a hundred pictures in it. <laughs> That's great. His first little leash. Looks okay on it, yeah. Welcome home, Louie. <laughs> if that's your name. We're just gonna call you that for now. This is his first couple seconds inside the RV. He looks a little unsure of what to do yet. Floor, isn't it? He didn't want to walk very much or didn't really know what to do with the leash either. So we thought we'd bring him inside and let him get a little comfortable with the, the new RV. Get you some water. Does anybody ever get sick of puppy kisses? <laughs> He's so young. He's such a puppy. I can't remember. The last time I had a puppy, I was probably like 15 years old, maybe 14. I don't know if I've ever had a puppy. Oh, it's been a long time. I mean, I don't... I know I haven't, I don't think I've had a puppy. Hi. Its tail's already curly, isn't it? Yeah. What are you scratching uh -oh. for? Yeah. Oh, he just piddled. Yeah. Gonna yeah. take him outside right away. Grab him. Well, within five minutes, he peed all over the bed. We tried to take him out right away when he got here, but he didn't want to pee. I know you don't like that thing. What is that prison strap you're wearing? Day one with the leash. He doesn't like it very much. Like it. It's kind of a little bit too big for him too. That hook is kind of heavy. Yeah. Poor selection at Petco. Yeah, they're sold out of all the small ones. Yeah. It's too bad we have so much fun puppy stuff for you locked up in the mailroom. 
first restaurant experience for little Louie. He's dining. Nice patio. Cloud nine right now. His pizzeria too. <laughs> We're just trying to get him used to. He's, this is his first time out. We just got him a couple hours ago, so he's ten weeks old and he doesn't know what to do yet. He doesn't know what a pizzeria is. Oh, that's good. That was his farthest run. That's a good run. That was his first run right there. Did you see that? Okay, you want to go back? Good run. His first feeding. Cute when he eats, cute when he sits, cute when he drinks water. How are you doing, buddy? This is new to him. Come here, Lily. Come here, Lily. So it's been an interesting afternoon so far. He's peed in here twice, and we've only had him in here for about three minutes total. <laughs> The rest of the time we've sat outside or been at the patio at the restaurant. He's slept a ton. He's doing really good. Yeah, he is. And I will say both times that he peed in here, I think we did a bad job. Like, we didn't keep him outside until he peed. We probably could have done better at that. Louis. Oh, and he pooped outside. Louie. Yeah, he's doing a good job. Takes a little bit to learn. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna feed him now, which we're feeding him the same brand dog food that the breeder fed him. And we'll keep him on that until he transitions and then we might switch to a different brand or homemade food. But we wanna keep the changes slow for him. So we're gonna keep him on that and maybe in a week or two we'll see if he's ready for a change and of course we would cut it in and do it gradually but this is the most comfortable he's been inside yet right this is your big den right here buddy this is your home don't go sniffing too heavy over there hey 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 we're gun shy Oh. Anytime he sniffs, is he going to pee? Oh, you're doing good. We don't know his mannerisms quite I know, there's yet. a lot of times where dogs... Oh, you want to come up here? You want to come up here? There's a lot of times where dogs just sniff, you know, to figure out where they are. It doesn't mean they're going to pee. Yeah. He is super... Cuddly. Cuddly and happy. This is going to be a... I think he loves both of us a lot. <laughs> That's good. He loves us. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to keep us. Get used to that, huh? He doesn't want to like be a, apart from one of us. He likes he likes sleeping on us. That's good. Yeah. He's bonded. Yeah, I hope that means he won't cry or act out out of loneliness. He seems to be pretty content. He really does. He's not whining or looking for other people or ways out. He's happy. I can only imagine this is the most, like, individual attention he's got. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely been an interesting day today, and we've had 
Louie now for about six hours and he's doing really good. It seems like he's come a long way already. Each hour he's progressing quite a bit and he's not whining and complaining looking for his brothers and um, he might be when he goes to bed. Yeah but he's he's I don't know if this is typical for puppies but he's he's sleeping a lot and then he wakes up and wants to play and we've been running him so it's just a little puppy so we just run up and down the RV park aisles and that just tuckers him out in about 10 minutes. Yeah I will say uh, his progression on the leash has come a long way because the first time we put him on the leash he didn't want anything to do with it and he honestly didn't even know what to do with himself he didn't know like how to walk you know he's a little baby so we just were st basically stood with him just to make him comfortable outside and we took him on three walks and by the time we were on our third walk he was running up and down he just knew what to do yeah and the leash i got has kind of a heavy buckle on it a clip so well, like too it, big for him yeah it hangs on his neck and it's just a little heavy so again we don't have the right puppy stuff right now but but we'll get it we'll improve it's literally in the office <laughs> right it, we have it we just don't have it but yeah he's uh he's super comfortable with both of us which is great i think he really likes both of us and he just needs to get more familiar with inside the rv He's not potty trained yet, so that's going to be our next big step. It's going to be potty trained and the and kennel crate and the crate trained. and yeah. yeah, we don't have his bed, we don't have his toys, we don't have uh, the leash and anything. So all we have is a collar, a leash, and his food. So we're, I mean, we have the basics. He has a lot of love, mm -hmm. and then we just need all the extra stuff to come with it. So this kind of feels like I'm sure what uh, parents feel like with a newborn, and you're kind of unsure. How to feel and what am i doing right now yeah. i don't know it's uh it's an unusual feeling for us but um, he looks happy yeah we've always been so independent and free and we can just do whatever whenever and go wherever and and now we have uh a big change yeah isn't that right so it'll be an interesting evening are we gonna get a lot of sleep or are we gonna get a little sleep we don't know Oof. is he how many times is he gonna pee on us tonight in bed i don't know